Baja is amazing. I mean, everything about it, it just goes over the top. I mean, the fans, the people, the locals, they, they all want to take care of us. Just Baja races in general is so big down here because, I mean, it's been around forever. I mean, myself included, I've been coming out to the races before I was even born, you know, before I could even remember. They love this. <laughs> Robbie Gordon is Brad Pitt. We're, we're just, we're just the Justin Bieber trying to come up and have some fun with the whole thing. But it's, it's just the characters that come down here, the, the love, the feelings, the, the posters, they just, they will do whatever it takes to get a sticker. You have to get in sync with Baja to be able to win in Baja. And so if you don't have the vibe with the place, the people, your race car, you're not gonna be in the mix. And that's what Baja is all about, putting it all together in one spot at one place and time, right here, the Baja 1000. Over 800 horsepower, 40 inch tall tires. I mean, they're just a machine. I mean, made to go to space. So you can't make any mistakes. You can't have mechanical problems. But that's what's made the trophy truck exciting nowadays. If you flip in a truck, it's, it's pretty violent. Motorcycle, you hit something, a cow or rocks, you fly off the bike and you kind of ragdoll. Everyone loves Baja off-road racing. There's a few people that kind of trash it, but it is what it is. It's Baja, you know? We are in Baja. Aaron and Puria, we're at the Baja 1000 in Ensenada, Baja California. Contingency, it's a big party for Ensenada, you know? There's no school, no one goes to work. It's all free. They can walk down, they can touch any trophy truck they want. They don't have to do it while we're going by 80. They can come by here and continue to do it while we're hanging out and, and really get a feel for the driver. This is crazy. Like, you can't, you get out there on the street, you can't hardly walk. It, it'd take you a half hour to go 30 feet, you know what I mean? Especially you run into someone and then everybody wants to say hi. And they're serious fans and they'd probably jump in front of you, you know what I mean? Just to get a picture. That's how crazy they are. Uh, the Monster Energy team is obviously synonymous with what's going on in Baja. Monster has been a supporter of Baja racing as long as they've been around, you know, and the team consists of guys like Colton Udall, Mark Samuels, one of my teammates, also my nemesis, BJ Baldwin. Then you got to talk about guys like Casey Curry who come over from the rock racing world. He's in the trophy truck this time. Kyle Aduke, Lucas Oil short course racer. He's here, qualified for the Riviera truck number one. He'll be first off the line, but he's never raced in the Baja 1000. So there's a little bit of chaos. And then there's other teams that have like this massive rich history. The Herbs team, Tim, Ed, and Troy have been around forever. Their dad got them into it. There's a lineage there. There's heritage there. Yeah, there's a lot to think about coming into tomorrow. You know, it's, it's the day before the 49th Baja 1000. You know, the flame's getting bigger. We're getting closer to that. That, that green flag, that D-Day, it's new to me, it's a little surreal, but it's it's gonna be magical when I roll out of town, going off that epic jump at the bottom 1,000 start, rolling out of town first. For race day, we start at six o'clock in the morning, but there's a lot more that goes in front of that. There's getting your bike ready, make sure everyone's on key, make sure your radios are good, so, I mean, sometimes you're getting up at 4.45, 4.30, and then getting food in your system and getting your body ready as well and then mentally ready. What's up guys, it's Colton Udall. We're here at the start of the uh, 2016 Ball 1000. Unfortunately, I'm not racing very far this year and uh, it's my first time in nine years since I started racing in Mexico that I won't be racing in Baja. Two days ago, I got a call and he had a pretty big crash and broke his collarbone in five places and uh, that kind of changed the whole Whole strategies. The plan is basically I'll just ride the first maybe 500 feet to the hotel that we actually stay at. David Kama will get on the bike. He'll ride for the next 80 miles and then we'll pretty much execute a plan that we already had 
with Justin Jones and Mark Samuels, and then from there, Damon Stokey will pick up pretty much my night section, and then Mark will take the last uh, 80 miles to the finish. Flip in a truck, it's, it's pretty violent. Motorcycle, you hit something, you fly off the bike. It's a rush the whole entire time. You're just on the edge, trying to hold on and just keep it clean. But there's always times where stuff comes up and scares you. Trophy trucks start four or five hours behind us. If you've never seen or heard of a trophy truck, then stand back. A trophy truck is a very, very unique animal. You got over 900 horsepower, three and a half feet of wheel travel. Five inch shocks, I mean bypasses, you name it, GPSs, satellite radios. Basically a NASCAR power plant with no restrictions. When a little kid plays with trucks and makes you go do jumps and stuff, it's a trophy truck. Copy, 1X is seven minutes out. I'm Rhiannon Camo, I'm David Camo's wife. Heard that unfortunately Colton got hurt and Mark Samuels was kind of joking around at breakfast with David asking if he wanted to get on the bike and much to my surprise, David said yes. He's been a little anti-Baja since he lost, we all lost Kurt and um, hasn't raced on here for three years. So I was super excited to have him back on the bike. We're here in Santa Tomas, pick him up and uh, see you guys at the finish line. 1X just okay, came through nine, where seven, we got two minute nine, seven, pit, one, split on 45X, so have the overall lead on, on time too. So that's good, first bike out, and uh, it's been, been a good start to the race. For this race, uh, Alan's going to start the race with our co driver, Apoyo, uh, all the way down to mile 290. From here to Ojos, which is mile like 40, it's pretty technical, it's nice and smooth, and they get you like kind of a little rough. I have a ton of respect for the guys on the dirt bikes. I just can't believe how fast they go. It's crazy. You know, some, some race courses, they actually uh, beat us. It is so rocky and so nasty and so technical that it is going to wear them out. I mean, for sure, they're going to need to take a Monster Energy break at each one of the pits. That's the only way they're going to get through this. Baja, I feel mental is a big part of it, being able to control yourself in race environments which comes along with any kind of racing but down here if you uh, you catch yourself pushing too hard or you know trying to get in the race and it, it could be very dangerous and it, you have to have a very good mindset and a very strong mindset to tell yourself when to slow down when to speed up when to do this and that and uh, you know, that's one thing that Baja is different from a lot of racing is the mental capabilities of it. Five-ish, do a turn in the dust, the rack tire, get the fuel, get some water, and keep on, keep it on.
dust, no matter what race course you're on, especially in Baja, is miserable. It definitely slows your pace down. And the dust here in Baja, you have all kinds. You have light colored dirt, you have dark colored dirt. You basically can't pass anybody. It's, it's so dusty. The trophy trucks make so much dust. And yes, you can creep up on people in technical sections, but as soon as it opens up a little bit, it's the dust bowl. Yeah, dust is sketchy, but that's what makes you fast, being able to drive in it. baby right here as uh, Ox Motorsports Monster Energy Honda pit number six uh, got the bike in did a full service which includes uh, front and rear wheel filter fuel going over the bike making any adjustments we had it out in just over a minute and uh, we had about a five minute lead over the 45 X bike so we felt felt pretty happy with our pit my guys did awesome Andy Vince squirts over here. So we're gonna pack it up right now. We're gonna wrap up the race in snot and see how see how it washes out. So it should be a good day for us, we're hoping. It was sick, dude. I killed it. Best I feel like I've ever ridden in Baja. Yeah. Had fun, I was flowing. Bike's the best it's ever been. Dude, I'm stoked. to win is probably 16 hours, which means no matter what you do, you're gonna be in the dark. Bikes, trucks, cars. So you gotta be on your game. A lot of people don't think about it. I don't stress about it. I love the night. In fact, I think I'm better at night because you're really focused on the course in front of you with your lights, but it makes you tired. You know, seeing all the lights, the, the terrain changes as you go downhills, uphills, the lights disappear, the lights flare up real bright. And uh, it just, it's an extra piece of the mental game that you have to dig into. We uh, project our finish will be somewhere around three to four in the morning for the overall trophy truck. Having really good lights uh, is super important. We have them aimed all over the road, up, down, sides, because at night, what you think you're seeing is not there. I mean, there's so much dust and humidity in the air that it brings these weird waves into the into the air that like it makes you think things are there that aren't it is not just the driver it's not just the navigator it's not just the truck in the beginning you had such an attrition rate you know you could win a race by by 20 minutes 30 minutes to your next competitor nowadays you're winning by seconds you know, let alone, you know, just, just a fraction of a second or, or, or small minutes is what these races are coming down to now. So you can't make any mistakes. You can't get a flat tire. You can't have mechanical problems. We're at the finish. The Baja 1000, Ox Motorsports, Monster Energy, Lava Propane. 
We're waiting for the for the one X come across and secure that number one plate. The Baja is an amazing place, you know, it, it gives and takes and there's been a lot of great people that have made Baja what it is that have passed away and when you think of the honor of those type of people like Danny Hamill, Kurt Caselli who I was friends with, uh, Jeff Cargola Ox who is like my son, but you think about their souls and them being here on the Baja with us and I think that we have to race in respect for them with a smile, a good attitude and uh, with everybody just being really stoked on their effort. These guys just won the 2016 score ball 1000 and uh, Golden Eagle all right record. Come over here first, man. How does it feel? They didn't need me. They still don't need me. They, they're the ball 1000 champs, and I just get to kind of tag along. Well, you know what, Dad? You are a Baja 1000 champion. You know what else you guys clinched? This is all unofficial, but you clinched the 2016 World Desert Championship. Let's hear it. Our first world champion. Well, we ended up uh, second car across the line, which was which was fantastic. It's pretty exciting. As bad as you drive, you when you walk across here, you see all the monster banners and the girls are, are singing. That actually broke me into a smile because I was so pissed off about how the day was going. It was good to see them here, and it's uh, you know we wouldn't be here if it wasn't for Monster Energy. They really stepped up not only with us but look around here and they're really taking a presence in off-road racing which is fantastic and uh, you see a lot of the fans around the course holding up their monster cam when you're out when you're driving by so it's really great for to see them involved in the sport.